time should come for men shall be lovers of their own selves covetous boasters proud blasphemers disobedient to parents unthankful unholy without natural affection truce breakers false accusers incontinent fierce despisers of those that are good traitors heady high-minded lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God Paul now gets at the heart of their motive and he exposes their practices and their deeds these are religious folks he's talking about, saints. Verse 5, having a form of godliness. Do you see it? Having a form of godliness. So do you understand what Paul is doing? Paul is helping Timothy to get beyond the external protocol of religious veneer. Get beyond how we come to church and how we dress and how we use religious lingo and how we all hold to the same ex uh, ostensive doctrinal tenets and start listening carefully to what is the real true motive of their hearts and watch how they behave and what you will find is that the vast majority of religious people who profess to be Christians will not really be substantive when it comes to Christ they do church well but they don't do Christ well they don't do the gospel well and I'm pressing this home to you because the text instructs us in an alarming way in 1 Timothy chapter 4, going back there, as we think about the sanctified servant, the text speaks to us and instructs us in an alarming way by saying this. Listen to what it says. Now the Spirit speaks expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, here it is, watch this, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Do you see that? giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devil. Point number one, apostasy is certain. Point number two, leaving the faith is not the same as leaving the church. Leaving the faith is not the same as leaving the church. In other words, apostasy is not merely men and women rising up and leaving the church and abandoning Christianity, as it were. Apostasy is departing from the tenets of the faith the doctrines of the faith, the message of the gospel, and its full-orbed implications for the people of God, as we're going to see. He says, they will depart from the faith, Timothy, that I have depart, deposited to you, because they will have been given over to. They will have been given over to. Do you see the, the word they take heed to? Taking heed to? You see that verb there, taking heed to? They shall depart from the faith, giving heed to. That's a Greek term that means to be devoted to as in worship. Devoted to as in worship. What's taking place? Now, who is he speaking to in verse 1? The Apostle Paul is speaking to Timothy about the teachers in the church. This is the category of people. He's speaking to the teachers in the church. He's saying they shall give heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Now, I've said this before, that when you read the word spirits, as we have in verse 1, seducing spirits, do not confine yourself to merely celestial beings like angels. The term seducing spirits is referring to the kind of teachers who draw away men and women to themselves by their damnable doctrine that has its origin in demon influence. Seducing spirits are teachers, teachers who draw you away. Keep your hand here and go to 1 John chapter 4. I want you to see the expression there. So while Paul uses the term spirit, and there's a reason for it, I'll say that here in a moment, he's not calling you and I to try to identify literal demons to understand what their doctrine is and what they're doing in the first sense so that we might know how to avoid it. No, he's talking about people and he's talking about teachers. Teachers are called spirits. Chapter 4 verse 1, are you there? Beloved, beloved, watch it, believe not every spirit. So there you go. Now, here John gives you the same type of uh, discerning, discriminating uh, uh, warning that, that, that Timothy is being told to do. When you listen to a teacher, don't naturally believe what they say. 
When you hear somebody preach or teach, don't just say, oh, because they're in a pulpit. Oh, because they're in a church. Oh, because they wear a collar. Or whatever it is by which they give their accreditation for being a teacher. Initially, when you listen to them, don't believe them. When you listen to someone, do not believe them just because they're teaching or opening their mouth. Discern what they're saying. Examine what they're saying. Be objective and critical as to what they're saying. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but do what? Try the spirits, whether they are of God. Now, see, that's your responsibility, Christian. Your responsibility is to be equipped enough in the truth of God's word so that when you're sitting and listening to someone speak, you can quickly determine whether or not they're of God. Now, watch this. False prophets and false teachers bank on, they count on you not having this gift. They count on you not knowing God's word. They hope and depend upon you being ignorant of the truth. Or, as we're getting ready to go into the next point, they hope that you are wide open, gullible, and susceptible to their seductive uh, allurements because they want to bring you into bondage to their system. They are hoping that even if you know the Bible, that you have no allegiance to the Bible so they can bring you into captivity to themselves. So watch it again. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God or not. Because here it is, many false prophets are gone out into the what? Now, I want to help you understand that now. That doesn't mean they're out there in the business world, CEOs of big Fortune 500 companies. False prophets going out into the world means to go out into the world and gather to themselves secular ideologies, carnal systems of thought and teachings, earthly, damnable, demonic doctrines that are outside of the scope of the Word of God and the kingdom of God, and they take those teachings and bring them back into the church. Human philosophies, worldly philosophies, demonic teachings of which Paul spoke about in Colossians chapter 1. See to it that no man brings you into bondage or beguiles you with human philosophies and doctrines of men and not after Christ. Are you guys with me so far? Now here's the point. It's important for you to know that what they did was they actually left the gospel, not the church. They left the truth, not the church. They departed from sound teaching not the church, and they went out into the field and gathered wild gourds, as in the account of 2 Kings. Remember when Elijah the prophet sat the hundred sons of the prophet before him, and they were all hungry, and Elijah tested his servant and said, set on a great pot and feed these hungry, hungry servants. And that servant went out into the field, and the field he gathered poisonous herbs, not knowing what they were, he gathered these poisonous herbs and poured them into the pot and gave them to the sons of the prophets. You guys remember that? And as they began to eat, they tasted what they were eating and cried out, man of God, death in the pot. Now, I've said it more than once, your average Christian church will go through that particular depiction of the account. <coughs> Receive metaphorically the food from this naive or even uh, deceptive servant eat it, and not even know that they're eating poison. See, according to the account in 2 Kings 4, where that's rendered, those men crying out, death in the pot, had discernment. They were able to discern the spirits, whether it was of God or not. They could determine whether or not what that teacher was espousing and teaching was according to the truth of God's word, or whether it was rooted in secularism and humanism and, and the damnable doctrines of the devil or not. And what the apostle is telling us here, John, he's telling us that you and I are not to have a, a spirit that is gullible to listen to teachers and embrace what they say without examining what they say because there are many false prophets that have gone out into the world. Hereby know ye the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus is come in the flesh is of God. Every spirit that confesses not that Jesus is come in the flesh is, of, is not of God. And this is the spirit of Antichrist, whereof you heard that it should come and even is now in the world. Listen to what verse 6 says. We are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the what? Spirit of error. Now, John, once again, is affirming 
the truth of the gospel which was deposited into the lives of the apostles and he says when you listen to teachers if what these teachers espouse and set forth is not consistent with apostolic teaching you can know that they're not of God 